So this guy, he hates everything. Now his name's Justin. He hates his job, he hates that he's 32 and lives at home with his parents. But most of all, Justin hates the US government. In fact, he hates the government so much, he sues them several times over his student loan debt. And the lawsuits end up getting tossed out. And this makes Justin upset and bitter, and he starts thinking about starting some kind of revolution. But then, Justin gets a job in customer service at an insurance company, Progressive. And surprise, surprise, he hates that too. Specifically, he feels like they're not promoting him because he's a white man. So there he is, he's all fired up and full of anger, and he rants about society and the government and revolutions all the time on social media. He even writes a book about his grievances called A Revolution Leader's Survival Guide. He's just an all-around angry dude. But to his credit, despite being angry at everything, he still has control of himself. Until... One day, Justin loses his job. He's at work and he aggressively kicks a door open for some reason, and Progressive fires him for this. So then he turns around and sues Progressive for wrongful termination. He claims that they're discriminating against him on the basis of sex because he's a man. And of course, the lawsuit is bullshit, so the court throws it out, and Justin is pissed. I mean, to him, this is just another instance of the government he hates shitting on the good, hardworking American people. Oh, but it gets even worse for Justin. Even though he really hates the government, his dad is actually a federal employee. His dad's worked for the government for like 20 years. He's some kind of engineer. And Justin despises this. Like, he and his dad fight about it all the time. He's like, Dad, you're a traitor. You're part of the evil machine. And his dad's like, I respectfully disagree and I still love you and support you. But then, one day, Justin has finally had enough. He knows things need to change and that some kind of revolution needs to happen. So Justin comes up with a plan. First, he writes a whole ass manifesto. Then he goes to a local pew pew store and he buys himself a pew pew. And the next morning, he waits for his mom to leave the house so that his dad will be alone. And then he goes over to his dad and he pulls out the pew pew and he shoots his dad in the head, unaliving it. And if that isn't bad enough, he then gets a machete and he decapitates him. And he goes into his bedroom and he sits down at his desk and he hits record on his camera and he starts reading from his manifesto. If you are a federal employee and are listening to this message, now is your last chance to resign from the side of the traitors and join your countrymen in taking back your country. And in that video, he holds up his dad's head to the camera to show everyone. And I promise you, whatever you're imagining this scene is, it's worse. I've seen the video and it's fucking gruesome. Then he basically tells his viewers to go out and unalive any federal employee that they come across. And he asks them to unalive the head of the FBI, federal judges, the attorney general, like it's crazy. Then he stops recording and he uploads that video to YouTube. And then he swipes the keys to his dad's car and he gets in and he drives away. Sometime later, his mom gets home. And there, in the bathroom, she finds her husband, unalived, with no head. And she immediately calls the police and they start investigating. Now this gruesome YouTube video he made, it's been up for a few hours at this point. And it starts circulating around and it's up to about 5,000 views by the time YouTube finally catches it and they take it down. But by that time, police have already been notified about the video. And they immediately get a warrant to track Justin's phone to find out where he is. Meanwhile, Justin has already driven like 100 miles away at a National Guard training base. And there, he manages to climb the barbed wire fence surrounding the area and he's able to sneak on to the base. Now, I have no idea what he's planning on doing here, but he does still have his pew pew on him, so I can guess. But luckily, the cops are able to track his phone. So while he's at the base, police locate him and they arrest him right there on the spot. Here's his mugshot. And on him, they find his pew pew, they find a flash drive filled with pictures of government buildings, along with instructions on how to make explosive devices. Yikes. So they charge him with first degree murder and some other terrorism charges, and he's in jail right now, waiting on his trial. That dude's just awful. Shout out to Pennsylvania.